Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar being organized by uh, Department of Forensic Science, AP Goel Shimla University, Scope of Forensic Science. Today's speaker, we have with us Dr. Deepika Bhandari. Ma'am, we welcome you here today. So uh, as we know that the origin of forensic science into the mind of common person has only been after watching uh, Sherlock Holmes. So uh, it gives an idea in the mind of general public that uh, forensic science is only related to crime and crime scene investigation. But it is much more than that. It is not just an application or not just a thing that can be used in crime scene investigation, but it is a field in itself. It is a sister branch of biotechnology, a sister branch of DNA studies, and many more. So for instance, oh, and today we have with us Dr. Deepika Bhandari, ma'am, uh, to guide us and our students about the scope of forensic science, where they can work to achieve heights in the career of forensic science. Uh, so ma'am is here to guide you all. Now compared to the uh, current growth in the crime scenarios in India, there's a huge gap that is there for the uh, forensic science experts. So due to this gap, the gap has to be filled. And due to this huge gap, the demand for forensic science experts has also increased. And so have the career opportunities for the forensic science students. Most of the candidates, they are hired by the government officials and the government agencies, such as the Central Bureau of Investigation or Information Bureau. Many legal firms and even private investigation agencies hire forensic experts to strengthen the investigations. It is not only limited to the investigations of certain uh, crimes that lead to murder or serious crimes like that, but it is also involved in uh, agencies that are government agencies. For example, forensic science has also been used in the analysis of drugs and drug use, the abuse of drug. So there are different prospects of forensic science and for that, we have with us, ma'am, who will uh, help us and guide us into all the expert expertise that can be, you know, used for the forensic science field students. So uh, now we have uh, with us VC, sir. He'll be joining shortly. Uh, but before that, without further ado, I would like to welcome uh, Deepika, ma'am. Let me introduce you all to today's speaker, Dr. Deepika Bhandari. Uh, Ma'am, you're a reputed academician, a researcher, a philanthropist, and you have done some of the pioneering work in the field of forensic science education in India. You have att attained your master's and your doctorate degree in forensic science from Punjabi University, Patiala. And during your doctorate studies, you have undertaken a lot of pioneering results and studies in the field of environmental forensic and occupational toxicology in the industrial belt of Himachal Pradesh. During the 2010 Commonwealth Games at New Delhi, ma'am, you have been in the doping control unit of World Anti-Doping Agency. The contributions of ma'am in the field of academics are numerous. You are also a young talent in the field of forensic science working in the capacity of assistant professor at the Institute of Forensic Science, University of Mumbai. You have served that university for a very long time where you have held many departments and many expert areas of the university. You have also acted as a content writer and speaker for a project of EPG Patshala by University Grant Commissions under the National Mission of Education through ICT, sponsored by the government of India for the subject of forensic science. You have also been the content writer and speaker under the National Health Mission of Education through the government of India, phase two of forensic science and criminology for UG programs. Ma'am, you are the subject expert for selection in granting the JN Tata endowment scholarships for higher studies overseas. You have also participated in prestigious the teacher's training program at Carlton University, Ottawa in Canada in the year 2017. You have worked as a convener for various committees like examination, admission, vigilance, anti-ragging, syllabus drafting for the University of Mumbai. Further, you have also acted as the chairperson, 
the paper setter and moderator for BSc and MSc examinations of the University of Mumbai. You have carried out and supervised some of the leading research in the field of forensic science and have published multiple papers in the discipline of forensic science. Your work on forensics has been presented at various conferences and symposiums across the globe, and you have won several awards for it. You have worked on some novel concepts in the field of forensic science, including applications of mathematics and forensic science in forensic journalism. And in addition to academics and research, you have also worked for quality assurance and is impaneled as an assessor by the Quality Council of India for the Sports Authority of India, centers in India. Not limiting your forensic uh, science skills to academics, but you have also joined Directorate of Forensic Services Himachal Pradesh as an assistant director. And you are looking there after the chemical analysis in criminal cases. You have also worked on penning down some interesting crime cases that changed the course of forensics in India. So as is relevant from ma'am's resume and your expertise ma'am, you have yourself witnessed and unraveled the different scope of forensic science that are possible. So we cannot get a better speaker than you ma'am. I am sure that you will guide our students to the best capacity. We welcome you here today, ma'am, and we are highly delighted to have you here and be associated with you. Thank you for uh, accepting our offer and coming here on a Sunday. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, Prachi. Thank you. So with this, uh, now I would like to invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Ramesh Johan, sir, to please welcome our uh, esteemed speaker for the day today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank So we'll be joining back shortly. I think there has been some uh, network error, ma'am. Sir, can you please mute yours, unmute yourself? Afternoon. Uh, gave the direction of Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Prati, th thank you very much for uh, giving uh, the encyclopedic introduction about Dr. Deepika Bhandari. Really, on behalf of uh, AP Guel Shimda. Sir, can you please unmute yourself? Uh, and I look forward for our university collaboration uh, with her, you know, for the development of uh, our forensic science department. Really, it's a lot of uh, happiness and um, we, can, we, will, we, will, we would have not got better speaker than uh, as I saw the whole uh, action of MAP. And she, she has gone through uh, many projects and feels she's one of the great experts, you know, as far as uh, um, I, I feel, you know. 
so our student our faculty we we all of us we will, we will get uh, benefited by her uh, expert uh, uh, comments on uh, about this forensic science because there is lot of scope uh, for students career in this field you know and uh, i know that in question documents and other cbi um, um, offices also uh, there there is lot of uh, i mean employment scope you know from uh, for forensic science you know and last time also we have seen that uh, we have uh, filled all the uh, seats in in this department i also congratulate dr uh, prem that uh, he has taken the initiative for this webinar and dr prachi and all the faculty of sciences the hods uh, really it's a wonderful thing and uh, once again i extend very warm welcome to dr deepika bhandari really and we'll look forward you know our collaboration with her you know thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you so much sir thank you for such a warm welcome uh, now i would like to invite uh, dr dipika bhandari ma'am uh, please guide our students and uh, help them as much as you can ma'am yes i'll try my level best yes thank you ma'am uh, a very good afternoon to all and thank you for the lovely introduction dr prachi uh we will start not taking much time we'll directly start with the presentation which is uh, scope of forensic science is that okay yes ma'am absolutely right now so uh as i was told that i need to guide the students so i uh, told let's talk about scope of forensic science right so before we talk about the scope of any subject we need to know the basis of the subject right so why forensic science came into existence was because of crime existed in the society so let us define what is crime right it is an offense against the public at large which is proclaimed in a law and punishable by a governing body so crime is something which is not acceptable in the society or in short we can say it is the breach of law then there are certain laws which prevail in the society and we call them as criminal laws uh, and it is defined as the body of law that for the purpose of preventing harm to society defines what behavior is criminal and criminal and prescribes the punishment to be imposed for such behavior so there has to be a punishment for every crime that is committed in the society so that is why we have criminal law so a uh, law comes into force when there is some kind of criminal investigation so there has to be some investigation for that so the lawful search for people and things that reconstruct the circumstances of an illegal act apprehend or determine the guilty party and in aid and it aids in the state prosecution of offenders so as you can see in the picture that there is a uh, investigating officer standing and there is a crime scene investigator who is uh, documenting the crime scene of crime so there he finds the uh, evidences which can be of some relevance or which can be taken back to the lab and uh, no other person enters the scene of crime so criminal investigation is also a very scientific thing all right so uh, since we know a crime happens then there is a criminal law there is a criminal investigation then comes in play forensic science so what is forensic science forensic science which you very rightly said in your introduction that it is the application of science to law this is the very broadest and the most acceptable definition of forensic science these pictures uh, which are shown here they depict that uh, why a magnifying lens because we look not only for the bigger evidences that are at the scene of crime we also look at for the trace evidences which can be as small as as a chip of a paint or a single strand of hair all right and at the same time there can be latent evidences which can be a fingerprint like when you touch something when you are at some of the place like right now also we all are working on our laptops uh, we can't see our fingerprints there but there we leave them these are called hidden or latent fingerprints right and at the other picture shows what that there is a crime scene that has taken place and when a crime scene investigation team reaches there they have to click photographs they document the scene of crime they barricade the scene of crime so what forensic science is basically a scientific way of crime investigation so 
what it is basically forensic science it embarrasses all branches of science and applied to the purpose of law so basically it is applied to give justice to the people all right forensic science is a scientific discipline which is direct to the recognition identification individualization and evaluation of physical evidence by application of the principles of natural science for the administration of justice so basically you not only recognize the evidence at the scene of crime you also have to identify whether it is of any relevance or not then you have to individualize it whether it matches to the thing that has been found at the scene of crime and then ultimately you have to evaluate the evidence that has been found at the scene of crime now the definition definition says broadest definition as a said all already and you also told dr prachi it is the application of science to law right and another word that is very synonymous to forensic science is criminalistics like criminalistics means investigation for criminals right uh, our scientific way of dealing with crime investigation uh, another definition is the application of science to the criminal and civil laws not only criminal laws but also civil laws civil laws are like uh, pertaining to property forgery and all these these are civil laws that are enforced by police agencies in the criminal justice system we have criminal justice system which has uh, four important components which is uh, police which investigates then is forensic science laboratory then is the prosecution and the most important is punishment or the parole part in addition to that there is judiciary sorry the fifth component of criminal justice system so these five are very important and all should be aware of forensic science so since we are talking about what is the need and scope so scope arises when there is need in the society so need comes when we see that there are some problems that are taking place in the society so uh, existence of crime was established from the time of adam why adam you know adam was told not to eat that apple and still he ate the apple and then the whole mankind happened to what we are right now so to say crime started with mankind is very right right unlike in the past criminals they uh, we were living in the contemporary society though the cr crimes were also traditional crimes but since we are living in a very advanced society so the technicality has increased so we have presently what cyber crimes as well not only to traditional crimes like murder theft robbery or sexual assault these are the traditional types of them but we have technical crimes also like phishing cyber crimes uh, you must many of us must be carrying a lot of spam mails where we must be getting aap itne crore rupees jeet gaye hain and something like that and all those are fake mails sometimes you are sent messages ki aapka number band ho jayega if you don't pay this much of amount and something something like so these are all what these are also technical crimes that are being committed but not necessarily we need to be there it these are being uh, not uh, being done from a same place that person is there but they are being done remotely from any part of the world right so there is an urgent need for the application of forensic science in the criminal justice delivery system don't you think if we know about how the crime can be stopped so not only crime has to be stopped can be stopped after the crime has been committed so it can be stopped when if you are aware right so it starts even before if you know about it you can stop it right there is something called nature and nurture also and many things that comes into play right there are a large number of trials we know there are so many cases if we have if you happen to ever visit a court just see how many people are standing there in the court and there are so many trials and most of them are like standing uh, out because there is no evidence uh, available against them they are left out in the society and the number of crimes are increasing so there are a large number of trials criminal proceedings and heinous crimes which end in acquittals there have been many cases where acquittals have been there in spite of the fact that the person is a criminal it means that the presence of physical evidence at crime scene will speak the truth and fact and this also forms the basic basis of forensic science you know human beings let like they, they have a tendency to or uh, speak the uh, lie also right the uh, either by threat or by uh, if they are lured with anything so they have uh, they might speak the uh, 
lie. But in case of evidences, if you find this evidence or like a fingerprint at the scene of crime, one cannot deny that he has not done the crime or he, he's, he was not present at, the, at that place. Uh, if you're aware, like uh, earlier, what used to happen that there was no uh, 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 commute, uh, commuting between two places was very difficult. So uh, traditional crimes were, uh, were only committed that the person is committing a crime and she stays there and the uh, evidences can be found at the same place in the same vicinity. But in today's world, just here right now, I can, you all can go outside the country within three, four hours. And you know, then how would we establish that you were there? It is either a CCTV footage, if you enter through an uh, uh, airport, that can be used as one of the evidence or biometrics, if you happen to put your biometrics somewhere. So this is how your alibi is established and your evidences can be collected. If we don't have those, so we cannot prove whether if there are no physical and that the person has committed, because I will, I will or anyone else as a human will definitely lie for that matter uh, to escape the punishment that the uh, law gives. So one definitely tries to escape. In the number of cases, criminals go set free. In many cases, there is a chance innocent being falsely implicated or convicted. This is uh, very much in case of there was a project of USA, Innocence Project, where uh, many people were uh, falsely convicted when the uh, then when they were later asked, uh, there was DNA profiling done on many people because since they said we were, we are not actually the criminals. So based on the DNA profiling, some uh, people got the acquittal from the court and they were left free uh, based on because they were not the actual perpetrators of the crime. So this is how innocents are being implicated in the court and the guilty are roaming free. The principle of criminal justice system itself is to protect the innocent from wrong convictions while making sure the culprits are punished for the crime they have committed. So there is a necessity of expert evidences for the accomplishment of proper delivery of justice. This will be achieved through expert of forensic science. So to protect such criminals, it is necessary to have more intellectuals who have expertise in science and technology. Don't you think so if people are aware or well learned with a uh, subject like forensic science, then we will be able to get jobs in for uh, in our criminal justice system. We can be part of a better part of a criminal justice system and make the society a better place to live. Such skillful and protection knowledge in forensic science is imparted through education. So this is what you all are doing, education, imparting trainings, and experience does matter. So that is also important. This will result in emergence of more qualified and highly technical experts in forensic science. There is more need to tackle the problem of pending cases. You know, there are lakhs and lakhs of cases in Indian courts which are lying pending uh, because there is no evidence. And if there are evidence, there are so many vacancies in various forensic labs and many places where forensic science is required. And because of lack of experts, uh, they are not able to give the reports on time to the court. And thus the like uh, justice delivery system is lacking behind. In other words, the forensics expert helps in solving the problem of criminal and civil cases which are pending for delivery of justice. So uh, since when we talk about need, scope, you know, when, why, when do we come to know about scope of any subject, when we know about the history of the subject, whether it is any subject, whether we go for research in a subject, we always need to know the history of the subject. So how forensic science uh, evolved? I'll tell you a little bit about it. I won't take much time, but I would definitely, since I have to tell you about the scope, so I need to tell you about the history also. So. Uh, if you remember, you only told about Sherlock Holmes, and this is how forensic science uh, was very much like uh, known to the society. Uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, okay, he was the person uh, who actually uh, created this fictitious character named Sherlock Holmes. But before that, even before that, there was, uh, if you talk, if we even we talk about art. Um, like Vedas, there also there are many things from which we have taken up a lot of things. 
uh, but we don't, uh, you know, we say that uh, forensic sciences or Western science, it is not Western science, it is very much an Indian science, but, you know, we did not apply it in that way, right? And we talk about uh, uh, Ayurveda, which has mentioned about uh, a lot of me uh, like poisons and it's already mentioned there, but we never uh, looked at it that way. Uh, so, uh, but uh, since uh, development, we have always talked about the forensic uh, in Western parts, so Western uh, uh, context. So we'll talk about, if you remember, about Archim Archimedes principle, which we used to study when we were like in school. So based on the buoyancy or the density, right? So basically based on that, we uh, there was a uh, Archimedes founded whether the crown of the king was original or not, whether it was hundred percent gold or not. So depend. Uh, then there came a scientific approach. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, just uh, the way uh, the name I told you. Uh, he actually his uh, he used to idolize his university teacher. He was Johann, uh, I think, Abraham Bell. He was his science. Uh, he was uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He was basically a medic uh, a medicine person and also a writer. So he used to idolize one of his teachers. Okay, so he started writing. He uh, after completing his uh, mass uh, like MS in. Uh, ophthalmology he started his separate clinic where he he didn't get much of uh, the patients so he used to sit idle so he started writing uh, stories so he started writing stories but he used to imagine his teacher because he used to idolize him he used to think if he had been because he had logics for everything so he used to think like if he had been how he would have uh, come up with the solution for this particular problem so he wrote his he wrote many stories but the first story of sherlock holmes which was written by him was a study in scarlet and from there this paragraph which i have quoted actually uh, has a very big influence on popularizing scientific crime detection methods so he says i have found it i have found it he shouted to my companion running towards us with a test tube in his hand I have found a reagent which is precipitated by hemoglobin and by nothing else. Here it talks about like how blood can be uh, detected at the scene or uh, at the scene of crime or wherever in the lab. Whether it is a, it can be not necessarily a, if a red color stain is there, it has to be a hemoglobin. It has to be blood. It can be a mud stain also. It can be rust also. It can be some fruit or whatever. So he founded a reagent where he said that I have founded a reagent which will tell whether it is blood or not. Okay, so right now we are also doing the same. We are using one antigen antibody test and telling. So he had that key. There would be some tests at that time. So this is the paragraph which actually tells like uh, where uh, he found a reagent. He thought of his uh, teacher where he idolized him that he would uh, found the problem to, uh, so, uh, solution to every problem they will have. So now we have the, so he named that test as now we have the Sherlock Holmes test and there will be no longer be any difficulty in that. So he, found, he named this test also because he was uh, talking about Sherlock Holmes all the time. So this is how Sherlock Holmes came into picture and we all know forensic science as a crime scene investigation by Sherlock Holmes, right? So second important person is Matthew Orfila. So he, he is the father of forensic toxicology, as we all talk, but he's uh, the father of modern toxicology. So there is a, a person named as Paracelsus. okay? So Paracelsus, he was the person who says anything and everything is a poison. Toxicology is nothing but the study of poisons, right? So uh, he said everything, everything in excess is bad. We say, if you play more, you play more, you play something, something, I forgot. <laughs> so if you can tell me, I forget. Uh, any which way, so excess of everything is bad, whether it is water or anything. So uh, he was he's the father of modern toxicology, and he wrote the book uh, on detection of poisons. He actually told there was a case. He he was a Spanish scientist, chemist basically. So he did a test. Uh, which is known as Marsh test for the presence of arsenic. Okay, so that was the most oldest uh, poison that was used by uh, females to kill their husbands. So it is also called as lover's poison, arsenic. 
okay so he wrote the book named as uh, detection of poison and the effect on animals so he is the first person so his name is matthew orpella second is alfonso bertolon so alfonso he was i think he was in germany uh, so he was he was first in uh, the army later what happened he was uh, he couldn't uh, uh, work more uh, much for much longer in the army so his father took him back uh, and he started working with the police uh, of uh, i'm telling you a lot of stories i hope you all are not getting bored oh ma'am absolutely not okay if you are getting bored, you can just tell me i'll just quickly no it's the... lovely to hear all this okay fine uh, so uh, he uh, then went, uh, his father was a statistician and the anthropometer uh, anthropologist so he took uh, he made him work in uh, police so where he was working as a typist he, since he was very orderly person he wanted to make a uh data for uh, the criminals uh that uh, who not only uh, what do you call not only the criminals the way traditionally they used to put the photograph uh, take the photograph and write about the details he started taking measurements of the various uh, bodily aspects and uh, le- uh, height of, and all those those anthropometric measurements for the criminals that were there so he devised the first scientific system of personal identification used using body measurements known as anthropometry anthro means anything related to humans metry means measurement right when we talk about logic it is study metry means measurement so whenever these two words come into picture just remember metry and logic so uh, so this is how he is known as the father of uh, forensic uh, anthropology then is francis dalton he was also a statistician and also a uh, anthropologist he lo- did a lot of work on fingerprints today's wo- day everything uh, is based on uh, like 100% sure is fingerprints right if you find a fingerprint at the scene of crime it is 100% sure that it will only belong to one person so he uh, did a study on fingerprint and its classification if we all can see our hands we see that we have loo either loops arches or tented te- or or uh, whole sorry so he wrote the book name as fingerprints so next is leon lates so he did the procedure for determining the blood group from a dried blood stain which is more important not only a blood stain the, the way it is done i'm talking about the dried blood stain that even after years if you find a dried blood stain at the scene of crime you can find what blood group it belongs to then is calvin godard he was a colonel in army of us he uh, since he used to work with army he uh, he, he was working with the ordinance so he he checked out that uh, if a bullet is fired from a shotgun or a specific gun or maybe a rifle they don't match a rifle would match a rifle a bullet of a rifle would match from with a rifle and of a shotgun would match with a shotgun so he used uh, a comparison microscope to see those tool marks on the on that or striation marks on those bullets so he published a uh, study known as tool marks which was specifically used using a comparison microscope and it was done on bullets so he is the father of uh, forensic ballistics next uh, is uh, albert s osborn he is known as the father of question documents or he wrote the book name as uh, question documents which is also Uh, for people uh, it is considered as the uh, bible for people who are into question document analysis he was respons- he was basically the person who made responsible uh, that the acceptance of documents as scientific evidence by the courts so edmund lockard our complete for investigation is based on the principle of exchange which was given by edmund lockard he demonstrated all the laws which were or principles which was uh, which were developed by hans gross uh, in a lab he actually made a lab in his uh, garage he was also in tripolis i think he was also in european country i forgot the name i think lyons in france so he did there so this principle says that whenever there is contact between two surfaces uh, there will be 
material exchange. Like whenever I touch something, I leave my fingerprints there and I take up the dust from there. Or whether if I walk or anyone walks, uh, my shoe prints would be left there and I take up the dust or the mud from the place I have walked, all right? So based on the works done by these scientists, there were certain principles which were dwelt. So we'll talk about those principles of forensic science, not only the principles and laws of the natural sciences, we also apply this, we have some principles which are very much owned to the uh, forensic science. So these are principles of uh, probability, principle of exchange, uh, we'll be dealing with, with all of them one by one. First is principle of individuality, it says that Every object, either natural or man-made, has an individuality which is not duplicated in any other object. That means everyone is unique and individual, which means that nothing can be duplicated in the whole of the world. Or, so whether it is man-made or it is natural. If you even see two coins, uh, right, which are minted, if they will appear to be the same, but the but the wear and tear marks since because of uh, uh, the minting process, there might be uh, some difference between the two coins or multiple coins. So if you see one uh, coin of one rupee, we'll see a lot of differences. Same thing, there are weapons which we appear to be same, but they are actually not the same. There will be differences. So this means they're certainly unique. They might look like same, and even the fruits like God's creation, such as seeds, fruits, and plants, they are also unique in themselves. Anything we say, no, they are exactly the same, but they will have some differences, which can only be found when you go uh, in a very much detail of the uh, analysis. Now, as I said, our investigation is totally uh, based on this principle, principle of exchange. It says that whenever two objects come into contact with each other, there is always an exchange of minute particles or traces in between them. According to this principle, whenever a criminal or his weapon of crime comes into contact with the victim or his surrounding objects, trace evidence are left at that site. In the same way, the criminal or his weapon picks up trace from the same contact. Example is in a hit and run case, what happens a person uh, gets hit by a car, what will happen? A uh, fiber will get attached to the car and uh, or blood if the hit is hard. And at the same time, there can be possibility that uh, paint might be attached to the clothes of the uh, victim. So, and in uh, some cases, there are tire marks also that can be seen at the scene of crime, skid marks of the vehicle. From the skid marks itself, we can figure out which vehicle it might be, right? Because every tire that is being used uh, has a specific radius and gradient, right? So in the same way, the tire marks, footwear marks, paint of vehicles will be present in the victim surrounding. Another classical example is the semen stain present in the victim of uh, sexual assault cases, whereas vaginal secretions or blood or hair may be transferred onto the body of the perpetrator. So that is for sure that uh, whenever two things come in contact, there is always exchange of minute particles. Next is law of progressive change, which means that everything changes with the passage of time. Like every, no one's, whether it is we humans, we go progressive change. We don't look like the way you used to look like 10 years back, right? We change with every passing day. So does the scene of crime because there are a lot of weather conditions that happen around weather uh, with heat, rain, or many things that are happening, water uh, and all this. They, what do they do? They actually tamper or they change the scene of crime and also with passage of time, everything changes. It is the you know rule of Mish Darwin's theory, only the change is the permanent thing, right? There is also a rapid change occurring at the scene of crime also. After some time, the crime scene becomes totally unrecognizable. Very recently, I went to a scene of crime where it happened that uh, there was nothing left. It was just a visit by me. So like they said, uh, there was a hillock 
shifts from there where a person has uh, actually accidentally fallen off. So they said, uh, ki, uh, they were telling me, ma'am, pehle to dikhta tha. Maine ka, but it has changed because now uh, since it has, it is monsoons. So there was a lot of uh, grass and trees that had grown. So it has almost changed. And obviously uh, the victim was not available since he has died, uski autopsy ho jubi But even the scene of crime has changed drastically. So law of progressive change applies. Right. Next is law of comparison. It says only the likes can be compared. So we cannot compare a table with a chair or a male with a female or a blood with a rust, something like this. So we need to have a similar, like as I told, in case of a rifled bullet from a, that has been blown from a bullet, uh, from a rifle, it has to be compared with a rifle bullet only. It is not to be compared with the shotgun. And the same way, uh, writing samples. If and writing samples are found on the uh, uh, like wall, they are need to they need to be compared with the writing samples on the wall, not on the paper. Next is principle of analysis. This principle states that the analysis can be no better than the sample analyzed. So it also means that if there is correct sampling and correct packaging of the of the evidences that are found at the scene of crime, then only some best analysis of the samples can be done. Like if you said garbage, we will like it's called garbage in garbage out thing. So if samples are not rightly sent, not right analysis will be, be because forensic scientists don't have a magic wound in their hand and they will do some magic and tell the results. It totally depends on what evidences are being sent in the lab and how they have been preserved. So there was a uh, yesterday itself, uh, one of my colleague uh, was ta uh, taking up the samples and it was a case uh, related to DNA analysis. You know how in tele uh, to, how unaware even the doctors are, they had preserved the sample in formalin and that is not right way to preserve the sample. And so we cannot do DNA analysis. Do they expect that uh, we'll do the DNA analysis on the sample which has not been preserved properly? So that is the principle of analysis, correct packaging, and sampling makes a lot of difference in the way it is being analyzed, right? We want uh, uh, to check whether there are antigens, which are something which has to be checked in the blood and you're sending sample of uh, uh, saliva is not right. So principle of probability, this can, this uh, principle actually helps in excluding a lot of people that might be involved in the crime. Uh, so it is based on the fact that all identification, whether definite or indefinite, or consciously or unconsciously are the basis of probability. So uh, the law of probability is simply, uh, uh, like if we talk about coin, tossing a coin, the probability of coming up, uh, uh, heads or tails is 50-50, same way. Uh, it's a co mathematical concept, right? Same way, uh, there's an example like finding a woman who has all a tattoo, who, who might have committed a crime, has also a nose piercing. Uh, so what is the probability? So let us suppose the first we have figured out whether it is a female. So out of 1, 000, 1 lakh people, uh, only 45% uh, are female, so 45 lakhs. So we have excluded those 55% of the population of the society of the, and then uh, number of people, uh, number of females who must have got nose piercing, not everyone in female has got nose piercing. So we exclude all the, all those females, right? So at the same number of people having tattoos is exceptionally low and that to a female would come exceptional. So the probability or the chances of finding that person would become that that is a very individual or a unique person will become very high, All right? Next is most important on which the present analysis is based is its facts do not lie. Eyewitness is a particular, in a particular crime may turn hostile, but physical evidences will not change, All right? Oral testimony of a witness can be modified by external influences, like it can be a threat, it can be emotional blackmail, influence of money, power, muscle power, but the material evidence will remain unchanged. This is very much clear. If, I, if someone likes me, will definitely say, nahi, nahi, ma'am, ye crime nahi kiya. If someone hates me, no, she has only done it. So it is like oral testimony can turn hostile at any point of time. Maybe at uh, police during police investigation because of third degrees, people might person might uh, say, yes, I have committed, but in the court might say, no, no, I did not do it because police was threatening me. So I said, yes, 
But if there is any physical evidence at the scene of crime, he cannot escape, all right? So uh, these were the principles on, on, these are basic principles on which criminal investigation is based. So we'll talk about the various domains under forensic science of uh, chemistry. So all the, uh, you know, uh, every subject has various levels. First is basic, then advanced, then uh, application part. So application is all uh, forensic science where the crime is committed. So there, when you analyze, it is basically nothing but application science. So chemistry is very important because all the petroleum products, all drugs of abuse, all drugs, all these are, uh, are covered under the chemistry division. Then physics, physics is like analysis of uh, paint, glasses and uh, glass and all botany, forensic palynology. Palynology is nothing but the study of pollen grains. Uh, there's also a story, I think it's in this, in the, it's in the study of scarlet itself, uh, where a pollen grain was found uh, in the trousers of the perpetrator. He had committed the crime at some place and then he went to some other place. From that pollen grade, it was found that the crime was committed by him since he might have visited that place. Then zoology, wildlife forensic, poaching and all uh, is uh, very much the, these days, uh, killing of animals. There was a very recent case in Shimla itself where a new Shimla, two, uh, there were uh, skin of uh, two leopard were and teeth and all were found. So that comes under wildlife forensics. Then law, obviously anything which is not acceptable to the society and is breach of law, though, that is how law comes into force here. Entomology, entomology like when a person dies, post-mortem interval can be found if it is in uh, some uh, jungle or some other place, open area. So from there we can find the kind of insects that might come to that body tells uh, at what time interval that death has taken place. Thanatology is nothing but the study of death or the process of dying. Dying is also of various types. Like, you know, there are various rituals that are performed after dying. Like we in Hindus, we burn. And Muslims, they are buried. Uh, but in Parsis, what they do, they say that even after death, uh, people should be of use to others. So what they do is whatever visible they donate from the body's organs, then they basically leave the body open in a uh, there's a, the place where they actually leave the body is called Tower of Peace. Uh, there they leave the body open, and it is believed that if someone will come and eat it, so that even that after death the body is coming for use for those vultures or uh, those. Uh, insects or uh, whosoever eats it. So it's nothing but the way a person dies. Then it's forensic anthropology. So forensic anthropology helps in telling about the uh, if we find some skulls or evolution of uh, all humankind is studied in anthropology. So if skull is found, what might be the age, what could be the gender, what could be uh, the Way, from, way in which uh, death might have occurred. Then odontology, forensic odontology, or we also call it forensic dentistry. So it tells about uh, if there are certain uh, uh, anomalies in our dental uh, uh, suture, uh, like uh, dentistry, then a person can be individualized. Then uh, commerce, how is this relevant to forensic science? Forensic auditing, you know, people are doing a lot of frauds these days. So entries are something else, but the real uh, facts and figures are something else. So forensic auditing is done. Economic frauds, if you're aware about money laundering. Money laundering, turning white money into, no, sorry, black money into white money, right? That's, uh, these are economic frauds. Then are white collar crimes, like people who are in high social status, they are sitting and taking bribes. So trap cases, so those are white collar crimes. Then toxicology study of poisons, uh, so a person might have taken the poison or he's forced to take the poison. Then behavioral sciences, they tell about us whether the person is lying or whether the person is not lying. So various techniques, I'll talk about the various divisions that are there in my lab right now. I'll talk about those. So behavioral science is one another important aspect because human behavior is very, very, what you call, uh, it changes immediately. Like I might be sweet right now. I might be very harsh after, like we don't know. It's very unpredictable. 
then is uh, question documents any document which comes in question it can be any document it can be a check it can be a bill it can be a credit card bill it can be a debit card bill it can be a will also that he, that person wrote the will and anything any document comes under this then fingerprint analysis uh, so we have different kind of, if there are fingerprints found at the scene of crime then uh, important aspect is arts like fine arts facial reconstruction crime scene sketching if we think that arts is of no use in forensics no wrong we need a person who needs who knows how to sketch a person also sketch the scene of crime so sketching is an important form of documentation in crime scene investigation then is forensic engineering if you're aware of this there was one movie in which a person's son died because of a uh, breaking of the bridge i don't remember the movie but uh, it was something like that because the engineers did not use the right uh, light, right amount of uh, mortar and all the mixture was not right though uh, what happened the bridge got uh, it got broke and so his child also died so this there was some movie there are many movies and there are also certain cases even there was a bridge between uh, bombay to goa which had a life of 100 years and uh, even the british uh, government has sent uh, a letter that now it is not of any use but still you, you know how india india works right so they still made it in use and what happened after uh, two more years like one after 102 years the bridge collapsed so the uh, during investigation it was found that it was already told because it had a lifespan of 100 years so engineering like how many years it will stay what should be the composition and everything comes into picture then biotechnology dna thing we always talk about dna 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 so all th things you know it is one of the 100 percent accurate not 100 percent but 99.99 percent which is almost 100 percent dna fingerprinting it helps in finding uh the paternity dispute cells so uh disputes issues there was a case of knh if you all are from shimla's i'm making i can make you relate to the cases that a child swapping happened there so uh, the real parents were supposed to be found then species identification whether to which species the uh, particular uh, like the skin has been found in wildlife crime so whether it is actually of the leopard or whether it is of the cheetah that has that species has to be identified then microbiology also uh, there are micro uh, microflora not only in the gums which are used to identify, but also there are micro, uh, microfloras in the soil as well. So if soil is found, we also can relate it to the scene of crime. So latest and which we are all aware about is computer science. So digital forensics, digital is anything which has digits, binary pe jo kaam karta hai, zero and one pe, whether it is a mobile, whether it is a computer or tablet or anything is under digital forensics. Cyber forensics is a huge domain or cyberspace like internet pe, uh, crimes that are con, uh, con, done through internet. And then mobile forensics that people uh, have a lot of things on their mobiles like it is a chalta firta computer these days. Then SIM card for, forensics. Uh, why SIM card forensic? People actually tend to break their SIM cards after they have committed some, some kind of. So these all are these all come under computer science. So therefore, anyone from any field will find a place in the dynamic arena of forensic science. These are the various divisions and the uh, type of evidences that come here are following. Uh, first is biology and serology division in any forensic. I'm talking about in general any forensic lab. So. Uh, you don't miss since uh, you all must be studying right now you don't miss out anything in your future so i'm just telling you just there are many things which i can actually share with you but i think i am limited i have not come on the topic right now which is job opportunities which is also again a long list to go i hope i have time it's already three ma'am you have time we're okay. loving the session and i hope the students are also liking it so i hope, hope you can <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have biology and serology division where blood, semen and saliva or vomit or fecal matter, tissues and skin and partially burnt bodies in case of uh, dowry deaths and hanging cases, they come. Then bone, with, uh, for uh, whether it is animal bone or human bone, on, to find its age and gender in respect of human bones. 
uh, in case uh, it is, there is a hair, whether it is an animal hair or a human hair, if it is a fiber, whether it is a natural fiber or it is a uh, synthetic fiber, if it is a feather to which species, it, uh, which bird or which species it belongs, then maggots, maggots, as I told you in entomology, it is of big help then wood and plant identification uh, because you know since we are living in a state where uh, most of it is covered by forest so we also have uh, people who do wood trafficking not only human trafficking but there's something called uh, uh, wood is also and uh, there are a lot of plants which are uh, they required it's a identification like cannabis and also which comes under NDPS but they need to identify it also that, that can be done in biology and serology division then wildlife cases uh, examination of animal skin, blood, and flesh. Uh, and then it's chemistry and toxicology division. Uh, this division basically uh, gets uh, poisons uh, in case of uh, so viscera that is most important, where as in we look for the type of poisons that might be uh, possibly taken by the uh, victim. Then petroleum products residues in arson cases. Arson is nothing but a fire with malicious intention, right? Then dowry deaths. Uh, then is alcohol estimation from, in, if you're aware about uh, drink and driving cases, this is nothing but uh, finding the amount of alcohol in uh, blood and urine cases. Uh, if you want to check it immediately, then it is a uh, breath analyzer at this, uh, if you might even near Vikti tunnel, there are sometimes police people standing and asking is there a funk marna, if it turns pink, this means the person might have consumed alcohol. And, but to confirm whether it was right or wrong, they send it to the forensic lab where they take the percentage of alcohol. Then as I was telling about white collar crimes, like people asking for bribes and all, then we have phenolphthalein uh, in case of trap cases, well, it turns pink again. If it is present on the currency, it is applied. Then is liquor, amount of liquor, uh, uh, sorry, amount of alcohol present, that is ethanol present in the liquor, uh, which is all there. Then methanol in case of hooch tragedy. Hooch tragedy is nothing but when a lot of people consume uh, illicit liquor and uh, because of the presence of methanol, they might uh, either uh, die or have a lot of health complications and my, might also lose their eyesight. So acid attacks, there have been cases and I have seen one, two victims also even here in Shimla, not other other places where who, who have got uh, because of the acids thrown on them because earlier they might be very beautiful and because they did not get, um, the men did not get what they wanted. They throw acids on the, the females and ultimately this kind of acid, what kind of acid might have been used for that also. Then grease, wax, oils and raisins that also come to us for analysis. Then cosmetics, because there is possibility that there is a high amount of heavy metals in the cosmetics, like uh, to make it more shiny, lead is used, right? And organic dyes that are being used, right? Then adulteration in petroleum products. We always talk about pet various petrol pumps, even in Shimla, that either wale se mat bharana, isme thoda milawat hai, udhar wale bharana, idhar achha hai. So right, we check about, uh, we check the adulteration also. Then anything which is not, uh, we are not able to find what it is, whether it is a powder, whether it is a liquid, we send it to chemistry division. Any unknown substance, because it will have some chemical composition, right? So that comes in chemi uh, chemistry and toxicology division. Then is DNA division. So they basically do DNA profiling of the, uh, not uh, here we all not only have for human DNA profiling, we have also started for wildlife uh, profiling also that animals. So what all uh, kind of uh, biological flus that come are human body fluids, like blood, semen, saliva, urine, etc. Human body tissues like hair, skin, flesh, and bone. Uh, like in case of sexual assault cases, sometimes what happens, uh, there might be a scuffling between uh, the two. So there might be uh, some uh, material flesh or something in the nail beds. So then nail bed materials, then teeth, then vomits, then fetal remains. There have been cases of uh, uh, like... Uh, uh, conception where the lady uh, did not want to conceive or something. So the fetal remains are also sent whether the fetus belongs to some particular person or not. Then cigarette butts, we, you know, if you are aware that the cigarette uh, uh, butt was found and the DNA was extracted, yes, actually it happens. That is very true. Even from bite marks, 
And this happened in the very famous case, uh, which was actually solved by our lab with the uh, CBI of Gudia, if you're aware of Gudia rape assault case, if you're aware of. Right. Then is physics and ballistics division. Here, the division undertakes examination of clue materials such as tool marks and telephone cables, then footprints, shoe prints, and tire marks, paint and glass, building materials paper and fiber, metal adulteration and jewelry, because we say that hallmark wali jewelry na agar hallmark nahi hai to mat lena because sometimes it is 18 carat, 16 carat or 22 carat. So it is all nothing but adulteration. Then soil, sand and grit. So as I was telling about forensic and engineering, actually we check here in uh, forensic uh, physics division, shining globule formation and short circuiting. So there is actually a globule formation if there is a short circuit. So if whether it is a short circuit or an intentional fire in case of a fire, then resuscitation of numbers of stolen vehicles, chassis and firearms. If you're aware that uh, sometimes the numbers are obliterated if the vehicle has been uh, uh, like uh, uh, if the vehicle is of theft, the numbers are actually obliterated and new numbers are placed on it. So to, re uh, to find them uh, or resuscitate them, uh, that is also done. Then firearms, ammunition and gunshot residues are also analyzed. Then the very important and uh, division is document and photography division. Uh, it deals with handwriting, signature analysis, typewriting and computer printouts and printed materials. Uh, we look for additions, adulteration, uh, alterations, obliterations, substitution, and erasers. Then stamps and seals. There was a very uh, famous case where, as in uh, 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 fake driving licenses were issued uh, here in Shimla itself. That, uh, the, but the person says, I did not sign them, but the, uh, there were people who said, no, he only signed. So whether he was lying or not, that was based on the... Uh, opinion given by the document divisions. Then security documents, such as currency, passports, credit and debit cards, then burned and soiled documents, then scene of crime photograph, which is where, then inter and intra division photograph, see if it is required to uh, document this evidences. If they need, that is done by the photography division. Then NDPS, all the drugs uh, which are covered under NDPS, so that is narcotropic uh, and psychotropic substances. Uh, those are covered, are analyzed in this division. Most of them are opium, poppy straw. These are the ones which actually we are finding here in Himachal. Opium, poppy straw, heroin, smack, brown sugar, charas, ganja bhang, and hashish oil. All these, uh, some of them are derivatives of opium. Some of them are of cannabis and cocaine. Then LSD, LSD, and amphetamines and uh, methamphetamines. These are the synthetic drugs. Then benzodiazepines, uh, these are... Uh, stimulants, then designer drugs. Then digital uh, forensics division we have where not here, but this is these are common. So every lab should have at least these divisions. So they undertake the uh, examination of CDs, hard disks uh, or hard drives and USBs, mobile phones, SIMs, SIM cards, computers, CCTV footage and audio video tapes or audio video, whatever that comes in whatever format or CDs. Then psychology, you know, human behavior is unpredictable. And during the investigation, human psychology, uh, sorry, forensic psychology, since we have that division, earlier we used to go to uh, labs of uh, GFSU or uh, Hyderabad, Nimhans. So now we also have, we have a lie detector here. We also have brain mapping here and layered voice analysis. Narco analysis, we don't have, but we are planning to have. So since narco analysis, we have to administer truth serum. So we need to have a doctor also for that matter. Uh, truth serum is nothing but the benz, uh, it is uh, sodium barbitol, which is given. But what quantity and how much quantity it has to be given is to be determined. So for that matter, narco analysis, if uh, truth serum, which we call as truth serum is given. Lie detectors based on our uh, skin response, uh, whether a person is lying or not, can be told the, uh, the amount of perspiration he might be getting or the nerves, uh, uh, sorry, what do you call systematic pulse rate. Then fingerprints division. Ma'am, is the narco test still valid by the law of India? Uh, anything which is under forensic psychology is just a corroborative evidence. They are not acceptable. And if a person denies, they cannot be uh, asked to, Question. or they cannot be forced. Right? 
these are all psychology is a corroborative evidence matlab these are not 100% authentic they can add to the investigation mm -hmm. so fingerprints division we all know fingerprints are 100% unique so it is based on certain principles i think i'll just skip all this we can have some other time also i'll come to what is what all job opportunities uh, you, uh, we all have after studying all this uh, so but this is an interesting fact fingerprints 60% of the people have loops 35% have whorls and only 5% have arches so if you all see i said if a person who has just uh, is having 10 whorls all the fingers have whorls will live a life of a king so you all can check <laughs> right okay. so what does a forensic scientist do so it uh, it uh, analyzes physical evidence that is sent to the lab also provides expert testimony because once the evidence has been analyzed they have to go to the court of law and appear as an expert under section 293 of criminal procedure code they also provide training in recognition collection and preservation of physical evidence in spite of being uh, giving training that we also have given training to lot of uh, ios investigating officer judiciary medical officers still there are so many loopholes that they do not collect proper evidences from the scene of crime and they expect us to do some wonders right so who all are the lab, lab experts in the forensic science of forensic chemist dna expert toxicologist forensic odontologist forensic anthropologist forensic psychologist firearm expert or examiner bomb and arson expert document and handwriting expert fingerprint expert and cyber expert so we need to focus here what are the job opportunities of this forensics so they can uh, for people who have studied forensic science can get recruited as scientific staff in organizations such as central forensic science laboratories state forensic science laboratories uh, then central bureau of investigation then national investigation agency then research and analysis wing dprd is bureau of police and research development then national ncrb's national crime record bureau in addition to that we have narcotics bureau we also have government examiner of question documents there are various government organizations and there are a lot of vacancies where science, as scientific staff forensic people can get recruited then if you have learned forensic science you will be a better police officer in whether it is a state or a central government you know how to de deal with investigation of crime you will definitely not tamper the evidences so police officer or official uh, in center or state government then obviously teacher or professor at colleges institutes and universities all three levels education is being provided so you can either be a professor obviously starting as a senior as a lecturer and then you might turn into a professor with if you stay in the institutes for a long time then researcher in any of the colleges because most of the colleges or institutes they take up projects so you can definitely take up the projects and become a researcher then laboratory analysts in colleges because a lab cannot function in any of the college or institutes if you don't have any lab attendant or analyst there then definitely if you are aware you can definitely uh, become a legal counselor for the legal aspects of forensic science because when you appear in the court of law you know uh, at times uh, you are across uh, examined by the law, uh, the prosecutor where he asks you such questions if he is aware of it you can actually work as a private practitioner also he can tell him what are the limitations because everything has limitations as well so forensic expert for laboratory analysis and other aspects of uh, forensic science so expert has to appear in the court of law a counselor will just guide you but expert will have to appear in the court of law right a forensic scientist for research related to forensic science so research is uh, not necessarily every forensic scientist is doing research right there are many people in my organization who are not doing research they are doing just routine work that cases are coming they are being analyzed and being sent only few are interested in research so only those are so you not necessarily you limit yourself as a forensic scientist you can be a very good forensic scientist by doing research also then crime scene investigator for crime scene investigation so at times uh, forensic people are sent to the scene of crime also or they are asked to accompany the police for crime scene investigation for a better uh, for 
doing better uh, investigation so that any evidences are not left. Then forensic journalist in ethical, you know, uh, there was, uh, if I remember, there was one way a person was uh, doing uh, journalism and he was reporting a case, but at the same time, he was going into this uh, scene of crime. Rather, the ethics say you do not enter where it is written, do not cross crime scene. So there has to be a barrication or the crime. But that person was entering the scene of crime. If you're aware that you don't have to enter a scene of crime since it might temper or that person's hair or cloth fiber may fall into the scene of crime and he can be one of the suspected person also. So if the person is aware, then only he will be able to do ethical reporting and make people aware because everything that is uh, known has need not to be reported in the society, right? What information should go among the masses should only go, not everything and ev any random thing should go because then you form the basis of anything. So even the uh, judges become judgmental by the way you're reporting because we all are so prone to media. So ethical way of reporting cases should be there. So forensic engineer for engineering aspects of crime investigation is important. Uh, so if not necessarily after doing BSc, if someone has done engineering, that person can also come into forensic science, render his service as a forensic engineer. For as a forensic consultant for suggestion and answering the different queries related to the forensic field. So one is a counselor where you can actually help people and some and consultant. These are two different people, right? Consultant only comes there and only uh, will you'll go to a consultant. Uh, what can what all investigation steps or what all can be done? And that can also be done. Then there are uh, people who are actually practicing handwriting as practicing handwriting as ex experts and also fingerprint experts. Then there are cases of insurance fraud, whereas in investigators are required for analysis in insurance cases. Then cybersecurity, we all know even uh, Aadhaar card, they have also started with their cyber cybersecurity wing and almost every department because uh, there is a, a threat of uh, theft of data. So cybersecurity analyst is one of the very important uh, and uh, people are required in that uh, aspect of forensic science. Then private practitioner for different facets of forensic science. Person who has learned forensic science, just remember that person can actually be of your job military, a job military, government job is not everything. You can actually go for a private practice also if you are quite talented. You know, every subject has a scope, but it is the amount of hard work you put in, right? Then uh, forensic auditor for account related fraud, people who have done CA after that they are doing forensic accounting. So that and there are only 10 forensic auditors in the country so far. Yeah, and, there, and you know, it is out of the context of why I took up forensic science when I was a student, I read somewhere, these are the highly paid people in the world, okay, world I'm talking about, but not in India, okay, <laughs> but, yeah. but at the same time, yes, you are paid well off if you are quite talented, right? Then this forensic cinematographer, I think this will be a new thing. If you remember, if you see some of the crime scenes in the movies, uh, weapon use, kuch war hua hota hai, especially in Indian movies, if you see uh, the uh, movies in, uh, if you see the Hollywood movies, uh, you'll see the that they put a lot of efforts in doing any particular uh, scene also. But here in India, weapon is something else and the pattern of crime is something else. Matlab, unimaginable things you can see. But if you are, are related in cinematography, you can definitely help there also and putting it in the right way. Then forensic environmentalist, yes. If you're aware of a uh, lot of uh, problems are there in the environment related issues. So definitely you can help in being one of them. And then toxicologist, it is related to poisons. Poison is anything and everything. So forensic toxicologist, drug analyst, then food security because there's adulteration in food also. There were many cases. There are many cases. I would I would not say there were. There are still many cases where there is a lot of adulteration in food. Then quality manager. Every company, pharmaceutical company has a, a QA, QC wing. 
So there also, because while you are studying forensic science, what happens, you come across a lot of instrumentation. Instrumentation is not sufficient, sufficient, you learn the application also, right? So that is why your services would definitely be required because the amount of exposure a forensic uh, science student would have would be definitely more because to reach the level of application, you need to go to a level of research, which is way too higher right uh, up when you do your bachelor's you know you are just aware about the basics of any subject when you do master's you become a master of the subject but when you doc do doctorate you actually apply all that knowledge which you have learned on all these five years of your life right so but in forensic science while you're studying you need to know the why you're you need to know the applications also so that's what you're doing at the simultaneously right so definitely i'll say you are well uh, knowledgeable and you also since you are asked to go for trainings you become more acquainted with the kind of working in the labs you are well equipped as compared to others uh, don't ever get disheartened but what are the future we will see the future of forensic science is looking very bright as new doors open every day in the advancement of criminal investigations with forensic science not only here but all over the country there are uh, there are proposals that every district rather every police station should have one forensic science expert attached to the uh, police station because you cannot call every time you have to wait for such a long uh, time for a crime scene uh, investigation team to come from a lab so what is in proposal is this if you're aware there are many proposals given by this government that uh, uh, there are universities like um, NFSUs have come up, NICFS has turned into a central university, so so, uh, so even GFSSU has turned, has, uh, turned into a central university for forensic science because they are doing, they are actually contributing a lot in forensic science and there are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, areas uh, where people are required because human power, is, human resource is the most important aspect of any subject. So forensic science has become an increasingly uh, prominent area of science within the last 10 years. This provides universities an opportunity to contribute to the development of both the practice and practitioners of forensic science. Thank you so much. If anyone has any questions. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was really wonderful. Um, uh, I'm also a, an assistant professor working at the biotechnology department. So I can quite rely, relate to all the things that you have told today. And uh, in spite of the fact that it was quite new to me, uh, so it was really good for me. And I'm sure the students who are studying this uh, will definitely love your talk today, ma'am. Uh, so there are many questions, ma'am. Uh, since our university has started the bachelor's course, and uh, very soon we are starting with the master's in, uh, in forensic science. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so there are questions that are coming in from the bachelor's student. Uh, so they are more interested to know that uh, what are the career prospects that they can enter into after bachelor's? If we talk about forensic science, is there any options that are available, you know, in some government organizations? Yes, yes, there are, but at the lower ranks. So there are staff uh, like laboratory assistants and all these, which require a bachelor's as the basic education. But after any which ways, uh, no one should get disheartened. After doing your bachelor's, you can always go for UPSC, right? <laughs> yes sure right so it's all about your efforts not only like in forensic lab yes but at a very lower level you can have an entry you cannot expect to be a, a scientific officer after doing your bachelor's right so you will enter as either a lab attendant or a laboratory assistant that is okay so ma'am uh, since you know in india forensic science uh, is still maturing you know it's not at that peak level as of now so you have pursued your doctorate from India itself. Uh, yes. so, uh, yeah. Is it so? Yeah, India yeah. itself. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I would like to ask that uh, what would you guide these students? You know, uh, they should go for a master's in uh, PhD here itself, or you know, they should try uh, for other options as well. Look, you should always keep your options open. You should keep trying and it's not that India doesn't have uh, opportunities. India does have opportunities, but at the same time, I, I don't want to make a comment, but I will definitely make a comment at the same point that uh, we don't actually respect the amount of uh, hard work a person puts in here. 
but mm-hmm. abroad the amount of hard work you put in you will definitely get the results it gets valued there <laughs> yes that's what i want to say okay ma'am otherwise there's nothing bad here also but uh, we all are living in the same society you know how it works and it doesn't look nice to make a comment about it sure sure definitely ma'am yeah <laughs> Uh, so and there's another job question. opportunities yes we have a lot of job opportunities okay uh, so ma'am can you guide these students on as to uh, where they can you know uh, there are some companies that they take them after their bachelors where they can get placed yeah so, there is one company known as ics in uh, mumbai then there is helic advisory and then there is one more ngo i forgot the name i'll i'll give you the names of those uh, there are actually many companies who are uh, into private practice and they are doing a lot of rather i would tell you the big fours like uh, eny kpmg they are also taking up uh, people in forensic accounting and all okay yes machine learning and all these are they are taking up people and they are actually paying really very good okay uh, so i have my students who are working there so i can tell actually Uh, I have a student working in ENY. I have a student working in KPMG, ICS, Helic. All the companies I said, all these are private companies, and I have my students already working there. Okay. So, so one should not get disheartened. You just have to keep exploring. You know, if we say no job, no, yeah, then no will get. क्योंकि आप पहले से नेगेटिव हो ना स्टे पॉजिटिव या आई गेट द जॉब एंड आई हैव बट आई हैव टू मेक एफर्ट्स यू थिंक दैट एवरीथिंग विल कम टू योर होम एंड लाइक वेबिनार्स विल आर हैपनिंग वी हैव नाउ आल्सो दैट वी आर गेटिंग वर्क फ्रॉम होम बट एट द सेम टाइम यू नीड टू मेक एफर्ट्स यू विल गेट ओनली दैट अपॉर्चुनिटीज व्हेन यू मेक एफर्ट्स whether it is india or abroad even okay. if you have to apply abroad you have to write uh, some letter of intent or something which is uh, a big huge proposal you have to make you cannot think you all of a sudden some university will come and take you up you have to write your what your plans are what your proposals would be you may need to make lot of efforts for that matter whether it is india or abroad yeah abroad we as you you and me both said that work is valued so yes uh, but you need to make efforts yes sure ma'am uh, okay so ma'am there's another question Uh, that after this bachelor's degree, uh, so we are talking about these companies. So, do they, uh, you know, can they apply as a forensic expert there, or you know, they get some other positions there exactly. after bachelor's? After bachelor's, you cannot be an expert. To be very honest, do you think you know after getting the label of expert means a lot of uh, educational expert. qualification, a lot of experience, expert. even you know even our scientific officers do not fall under the uh, category of experts you need to work for 3 hours be after being a scientific officer and then you become an expert they are experts but to appear as an expert in the court of law you need to have experience also okay so they have to go for their doctorate definitely they have to go at least for their masters at least for their masters yes yes yeah so i think uh, most of the questions and the queries of the students have been solved ma'am so i am uh, really hopeful and i'm really sure that we are looking for some collaborations with you ma'am yes and, definitely uh, our students can be benefited uh, by sure. you know any training any form of uh, experience that they can get at your place ma'am yes sure you can apply and uh, we look forward for your uh, collaboration yes. and training for your students Yeah, and thanks. definitely i would love to guide students because i have been in teaching for so many years uh, and actually i feel really happy and i enjoy teaching basically <laughs> so uh, yeah i uh, rather i would help students because you know whenever a teach a student gets benefit a teacher also gets the name right happy, yeah. <laughs> so since you are a teacher you can relate to it so yes. ki ye mera student tha something of this kind <laughs> Yeah, it like, happens. You get that happiness streak. Yes, you. it feels yeah, like. Yeah, I'm telling that my students are working in such such companies. I feel so proud. You know. <laughs> yeah, recently one of my students in the previous, and he has been uh, you know uh, enrolled into a PhD program in IIS in Bangalore. So oh. I was very proud. I was like, I taught him. <laughs> yeah, that's a matter of proud even for the teachers, right? Yeah, yes. Sure. Uh, thank you so much ma'am your lecture was very very nice and we loved interacting with you 
Uh, Thank so, you so much. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, call upon our uh, HOD of the School of Sciences, uh, our head of department, uh, Dr. Prem Singh. So, uh, sir, if you are uh, listening to me and if you can hear us clearly, uh, can you please deliver your note of thanks to ma'am and uh, guide our students and comment on the talk that was delivered today? Dr. Prem? Uh, I think Sir is experiencing some network errors. Yeah, Shimla has a lot of technical and network <laughs> issues. Yes, definitely, ma'am. Especially when the weather is bad. Today yeah, is it okay? it's about to rain. TK, <laughs> ma'am, thank you so much for joining here on a Sunday. And, thank you uh, so much. Thank yeah. you for having me. No, ma'am, thank you for sparing your valuable time. Thank you so much. Uh, it was lovely having you here. And we hope to have uh, many good collaborations with you. And uh, I would also like to thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Ramesh Johan, sir, for being here and coming here, joining here today uh, at the very last moment. And we have some uh, dignitaries from the State Forensic Laboratories from Rajasthan also, Dr. Mukesh Sharma, sir. Uh, so, sir, thank you for being here as well. Uh, so, I think uh, Dr. Prem has joined back, sir. Yeah, can uh, somebody please unmute Dr. Prem? Oh. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So he's experiencing some issues. That's absolutely okay, ma'am. So thank you so much again, ma'am, for being here. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, ma'am. And also. looking forward for some collaborations. Thank yes. you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah, so with this, we can end the meeting now.